cells. They are the smallest unit of life. They make up all living organisms. They are quite literally the building blocks of all living things. They're responsible for everything from creating hormones to fighting off illness to sending messages within our bodies. Join me for today's video as we take a look at the top 15 most cool types of cells. Number 15. White Blood Cells White blood cells may not be the most abundant cells in the human body, but their importance cannot be overlooked. These cool cells are responsible for fighting off infection and disease. Also called leukocytes, white blood cells travel in our blood to source out sites of infection. When they find a site of infection, they notify other white blood cells of their location, and then they produce antibodies that lock onto the germs to destroy them. There are roughly between 4,000 and 10,000 white blood cells per microliter of blood, but when the body is fighting disease or infection, there are plenty more. This is why a high white blood cell count likely signifies an illness within the body. White blood cells lack hemoglobin and have no nucleus, and without them, we would have no defense against illness. So, we need our army of white blood cells to stay healthy. Number 14. Bone Cells Bone cells are the types of cells that keep on giving. Bone cells can survive for more than 200 years after a person has passed away, unless cremated. There are four types of bone cells, osteoblasts, osteoclasts, osteocytes, and osteoprogenitor. Together, these four types of cells make up our bone tissue. Bones are, of course, integral in our bodies because these bones store minerals like calcium and phosphorus. They also protect our internal organs, and they create a hard frame for muscular movement. Osteoblasts and osteoclasts are the cells responsible for forming new layers of bone and for healing those bones when they break. Number 13. Amoeba Also often called an amoeboid, an amoeba is a type of cell that can change its shape. They do this by extending and retracting pseudopods. These pseudopods are a temporary arm-like projection that's found in the cell membrane and allows the cells to move. Amoebae lack the cell walls, so when they push out the pseudopods through the cell membrane, they're able to move freely. This is also how they eat. By stretching out the pseudopods, amoeba are able to surround a piece of food and pull it into themselves. Amoeba do feed on bacteria, algae, and other small particles of animal matter or dead plants. In their simplest definition, amoeba are any protozoan cell that moves by crawling. Number 12. Skin Cells Since skin is the largest organ of the body, it should come as no surprise that the cells that make up our skin are pretty plentiful. In fact, on average, an adult has about 300 million skin cells, with about 19 million cells in just one square inch of skin. Cells are constantly being shed to the tune of around 30,000 to 40,000 cells each and every minute. As such, it's estimated that about half of the dust found in an average household is actually dead skin cells. Skin cells don't have a long lifespan. They only live for about two or three weeks. The epidermis, which is the outer layer of our skin, has layers of four different types of skin cells. The keratinocytes, which are the most common, and they create a barrier between your insides and the rest of the world. The melanocytes, responsible for giving your skin its color by producing melanin. Merkel cells, which are connected to our nerve endings. And Langerhans cells, which determine immune responses like inflammation. Number 11. Muscle cells. Muscle cells have the amazing ability to shorten or elongate, which brings about the relaxation and contraction of muscle fibers. And it's this expansion and contraction that allows our muscles to perform their functions. Muscle cells are composed of bands of actin and myosin, and they're either alternating or non-alternating. Both actin and myosin are special muscle pigments. Muscle cells are commonly called myocytes, and there are three types of muscle cells, cardiac, skeletal, and smooth. Cardiac muscle cells, or cardiomyocytes, make up the middle muscular layer of the heart. Skeletal muscles make up the muscles that are connected to the skeleton. And smooth muscle cells are the ones responsible for all the involuntary muscle movements in our body, like moving food through our digestive system. Number 10. Sex Cells Sex cells are pretty important. Without them, we literally wouldn't be here. Sex cells are reproductive cells that bring new life into existence. They are created in both the male and female gonads, but they're quite different in appearance. Male sex cells, better known as sperm, have long tails and are motive. Female sex cells, on the other hand, are called ova. Ova are non-motive, and they're a lot larger than their male counterparts. 
When these two different types of sex cells come together during fertilization, a whole new individual is formed. Male and female sex cells exist independently of one another, but to create a new individual, they need each other. Both male and female sex cells that don't achieve fertilization simply die. Number 9. Paramecium When it comes to cool cells, the paramecium has a number of bragging rights. Paramecium are single-celled microscopic organisms. The entire organism is basically just a cell. Paramecium are found in water habitats and are most commonly oblong-shaped. They move thanks to their cilia, which are tiny hair-like structures. These cilia propel the paramecium by creating whiplash-like movements. They lack a brain, a heart, ears, and eyes, but even so, along with bacteria, they help with plant decomposition. The cell is protected by something called a pellicle, which is a firm but flexible gelatinous membrane. They were first seen under a microscope in the late 17th century and have been widely studied ever since. Number 8. Nidocytes If you've ever wondered how a jellyfish stings, well, you're about to find out. It's all thanks to a special type of cell called nidocytes. Nidocytes are an extremely unique type of cell found in creatures like jellyfish and sea anemones. In fact, the presence of this amazing cell is what defines them. Nidocytes are an explosive cell, and they're responsible for giving the telltale sting of jellyfish. The cell contains one large secretory organelle called a nidocyst, and it's this component of the cell that allows them to sting. Basically, on the external side of the cell, there's a hair-like trigger. When that trigger is activated through perceived threat, the elongated portion called the thread is ejected. When the cell fires, it shoots out the thread inside of it. The thread contains the toxin, thus defending the jellyfish by immobilizing its enemy. These cells are most important on the tentacles of the jellyfish, which is why it's so important to stay away from them. Number 7. Fat Cells Fat, in general, is something that most people don't want to talk about, unless we're talking about the fat content on a nice ribeye steak. And while the word fat contains a lot of negative connotations, fat cells are pretty fascinating. Fat cells are also known as adipocytes, and they are a large part of adipose tissue. Fat cells contain droplets of stored fat or triglycerides. This stored fat can be used for energy, and when the fat is being stored, the cells get round and swollen. When the fat is being used, the cells shrink in size. But fat cells have other very important roles in the human body. They have important endocrine functions. Fat cells produce hormones that can influence a lot of things, from sex hormone production to blood clotting to cell signaling blood pressure regulation. So those swollen cells don't just determine the overall appearance of our bodies, they determine a lot of our overall health. Number 6. Plant Cells Humans aren't the only living things that are made up of cells. All living organisms are, including plants. Plant cells, also called eukaryotic cells, have similarities to animal cells, but they also have some distinctive differences. Plant cells have a nucleus and organelles that are surrounded by a membrane. Plant cells are extremely tiny and can only be seen under a microscope. They range in size from 0.01 and 0.1 millimeters. These cells are amazing because they're the only cells on Earth that can produce their own food. Plant cells are very complex and are made up of many different things, including chlorophyll, cellulose, chloroplasts, plasma membranes, and microtubules. Chloroplasts are of special importance because they are organelles responsible for photosynthesis. Plant cells differ from animal cells because they have three things that animal cells don't. A cell wall, chloroplast, and a vacuole. And plant cells have a rectangular shape, while animal cells have irregular shapes. Number 5. Pancreatic Cells Pancreatic cells are very specialized cells. They produce hormones that are released into the bloodstream. The hormone insulin, for example, is made up of a type of pancreatic cell called a beta cell. Beta cells make up most of the pancreatic cells. 75% of pancreatic cells are beta cells. These beta cells then are very important because our bodies need insulin. Insulin helps our bodies use sugar for energy. Without the right amount of insulin in our bodies, our bodies cannot properly process and convert the sugars we eat. But beta cells aren't the only type of pancreatic cell. We also have alpha cells. These alpha cells comprise around 20% of pancreatic cells, and they make a hormone called glucagon. Glucagon sends messages to our livers to release stored sugar when our blood sugar is too low. These two types of cells work together to help our bodies regulate sugar. 
Pancreatic cells are the culprit for diabetes, when beta cells don't produce enough insulin or when our bodies can't use the insulin produced by the beta cells, then we're at risk of developing diabetes, which is why our pancreatic cells, and especially those beta cells, are so important. Number 4. Stomata Cells Stomata cells are an integral part of a plant's well-being. They're located in the epidermis of tree leaves and needles. These cool cells are involved in the exchange of carbon dioxide and water between plants and the atmosphere. When water evaporates from the surface of a leaf, it does so through stomata cells. So these stomata cells aid in the process of transpiration. Stomata cells are also called guard cells. These cells are produced in pairs with a gap between them. This produces the stomatal pore. The pores open and close depending on how much water is available. Water is lost through evaporation when the cells are open, so the plants must replace the lost water by taking more in through their roots. These stomata cells then help plants balance out the amount of CO2 absorbed from the air with the water loss through the pores. Number 3. Red Blood Cells Below the surface of our skin, our blood flows everywhere throughout our veins, so it should come as no surprise that red blood cells are so plentiful in the human body. Just one ounce of blood contains 150 billion red blood cells. Take that measurement up to a pint, and you have 2.4 trillion red blood cells. And even cooler, the human body manufactures 17 million blood cells per second. However, that number can increase if stress dictates the need, meaning that upwards of 119 million blood cells can be produced within the time frame of a mere second. Red blood cells also contain a protein called hemoglobin. That's what makes our blood red. Not all animals have red blood cells, though. Some spiders, squid, and octopus, for example, have blue blood. Some leeches and worms have green blood, and some insects have yellow blood. In humans, red blood cells account for a good portion of our blood, but they're not the only part of our blood. Red blood cells make up 40% of our blood, plasma makes up 55%, and platelets make up about 4% and white blood cells just make up 1%. And while red blood cells share some similarities with other cells, red cells are unlike other cells in our bodies because they don't have a nucleus, mitochondria, or ribosomes. This allows the cells to make enough room for the millions of hemoglobin molecules in the cells. Number 2. Nerve Cells Nerve cells aren't just one of the coolest looking cells, they're also one of the most interesting. Our bodies are loaded with nerve cells, more commonly called neurons. There are four types of neurons, and together these neurons make up our nervous system. Neurons are our internal communication system, and they process everything from sight to sound to taste and touch. Nerve cells are responsible for taking in and collecting information through our senses. They are busy little cells, and they are constantly collecting information and then sending that information to our brains. Our brains then collect it and process it to understand what's happening both inside and outside our bodies. Without nerve cells, we wouldn't be able to understand or process the wide range of things that happen to us. Neurons differ in shape and size depending on where they're located. Different neurons have a different job to do. Sensory neurons gather information from outside our bodies, like our glands, muscles, and skin, and they deliver this information by way of electrical signals and send it to our central nervous system. Motor neurons do the opposite. They send information from our central nervous system to the outside parts of our bodies. Receptor neurons sense the environment around us and then convert that information to electrochemical energy, which is sent by way of the sensory neurons. And interneurons send messages from one neuron to another. Nerve cells do their job depending on what part of the nervous system they're in. So, our nervous system contains two parts, the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system and neurons are an integral part of both. Unlike other cells, though, neurons cannot divide or replace themselves, so when we lose neurons, we lose them permanently, and we all lose neurons as we age. In fact, by the time someone is 70 years old, they've lost about one-tenth of their neurons. And because neurons cannot regenerate, nerve damage in our bodies is permanent. Don't fear, though, because we have a lot of nerve cells in our bodies. We have 100 billion nerve cells in our brains alone, and 13.5 billion nerve cells in our spinal cord. So even losing one-tenth of our neurons still leaves us with plenty of those cool and communicative cells. Number 1. Stem Cells 
True to their name, all cells stem from stem cells. They are truly miraculous, as they are neutral and can turn into other cells. These cells are abundant in our bodies, but they reduce in quantity with age. Stem cells can be altered into mature cells like heart muscle cells. They can help our body heal. There are different categories or types of stem cells too. Embryonic stem cells can generate all types of cells found in our bodies. For this reason, these types of cells are pluripotent because they can form into any other type of cell. Embryonic stem cells are very valuable to stem cell research because they can be used to model diseases, test drugs, and as therapy when injected into the body. Mesenchymal cells are found in bone marrow and can make different types of cells to treat diseases. Amniotic stem cells come from the amniotic sac. Stem cells are our internal repair system and they replace lost cells or damaged cells. They are literally the building blocks of all organs, tissues, and blood and our immune system. It's for this reason that stem cell research holds so much promise. Using stem cells to treat things like heart disease, spinal cord injury, burns, strokes, and diabetes is an ongoing field of research. We are only just beginning to understand and unlock the powerhouse of potential in stem cells. Stem cells as regenerative medicine will help us use our body's own ability to heal and repair itself so we can perhaps cure disease instead of just treat it. The fact that it all stems from stem cells, and the fact that stem cells have so much potential to possibly cure diseases and illness, has earned these fascinating cells the top spot on this list. Thank you to our channel members.